With a single line of MATLAB code, you can generate standalone generic C or C++ code for deep learning models that can be readily deployed to edge devices. In this video, I will walk you through an end-to-end -end workflow for training and compressing a deep learning model that can be used to estimate a battery pack state of charge, or SOC, and deploying it to a microcontroller. In the battery management system, accurate estimation of SOC is essential to understand battery health and optimizing performance by learning complex patterns from multiple inputs. Deep learning methods are more accurate and robust over traditional methods such as column counting and the lookup tables. However, deploying deep learning models on embedded systems poses challenges due to limited processing power, memory constraints, and real-time requirements. In this example, we will use real-world cyclic testing data collected at 1 Hz from a lab to train the deep learning model. The charging cycles follows a typical CCCV profile, and this charging mimics real-world usage. In addition to measuring SOC values, we also took measurements of the battery pack voltage, current, and temperature. Here is a snippet of the raw data. We will design our neural network to use these three values as its input. Prior to training, the data was normalized, windowed into one-minute frames, formatted as MATLAB DL array objects, and divided into different sets to be used for model training, validation, and testing. In this example, we will use a recurrent neural network architecture with a single long short-term memory or LSTM layer to predict the SOC of the battery module. LSTM layers contain an internal state, allowing them to learn long-term dependencies between different time steps. We can use Deep Network Designer app in MATLAB to build and configure this LSTM model. We will set the sequence input layer to have three inputs to accommodate to the three channels of data we are using to estimate the SOC. We can configure other parameters as needed before export this model into workspace. Once the model structure is set up, we can call the trainNet function to train the LSTM model according to a set of predefined training options. After training is completed, we can evaluate the model's accuracy on the testing dataset. The original model achieves the root mean square error or RMSE of 0.0175, which is about 1.75% of difference from the truth. The model captures the general trend well and keeps the prediction close to the true state of charge. As edge devices always have limited onboard memory, we need to check the size of the model we have just created. If we open the trended DL network model in the Deep Network Designer app, we can analyze the network for compression to learn more about the methods that will work with our network and to what degree we can compress. In the compression analysis window, we see the model would take more than 160 kilobytes of static space, which is more than 60% of the board RAM of 256 kilobytes here. We want to minimize this percentage to ensure that we have adequate memory for the rest of the battery management software we intended to have running on the board. MATLAB offers three methods for compressing deep learning models, quantization, pruning, and projection. For our LSTM model, we see we can compress it by approximately 96% with projection. This significantly reduces the amount of space required to store the model in memory and its computational requirements. Model projection can be achieved simply with one line of code using the compress network using projection function. This technique uses principal component analysis, or PCA, to identify the subspace of learnable parameters that result in the highest variance in neuron activations. This analysis requires only the predictors of the training data. You may notice that the accuracy of the projected model is not as good as the original model. Generally, there is a trade-off between the amount of compression and the network accuracy. The network may still need fine-tuning as accuracy can drop following the compression. The projected model provides a good initialization for fine-tuning, which typically takes far less epochs compared with the training from scratch. 
and can largely recover the accuracy of the original model. Now we can quickly test how the projected and fine-tuned model compare against the original model. We can see the fine-tuned model performs as well as the original model with an RMSE of 0.0199 while significantly compressed in size from 163 kilobytes to 6.3 kilobytes. This reduces the amount of memory required to store the network by 96%. Now let's move forward with generating generic C code for the compressed model. We will save the final version of the model as a MET file. Then we will want to create a function that loads this model and predicts SOC given the inputs of voltage, current, and temperature at each time step. This function serves as an entry point for the generated code, therefore we can call it entry point function. It is always good to check the code analyzer indicator is green before moving forward with code generation. Now we can open Map Coder app for code generation. We can create a project and add the entry point function we just created. We can define the input dimension to align with the input of the DL network. Then we can select C as the target language. We can change the output type to static library to make the generated code deployable to any type of microcontroller. Now we can click the Generate Code button and shortly all the MATLAB code and model we have created is translated to C code. After code generation is finished, we can open the code generation report to view the generated code and see how it relates to the original MATLAB code. In this callPredict.c file, you can find the learned weights bias and the nonlinear activations of the LSTM model. You can also find the forward path of this model. The graphical workflow we just used for code generation can also be done programmatically with the MATLAB script. This script can then be used to quickly regenerate code if we decide to make any additional changes to the model in the future. At this point, the generated C source and library files can be incorporated into the battery management system's firmware. With this integration, the battery module can now utilize the deep learning model to estimate the state of charge in real time. For more information about designing, training, compressing, and generating code for deep learning models in MATLAB, please refer to our documentation.